Okay, so the time is 20.29 on the 4th of January 2023 and we're in interview room 1 at Vespucci Police Station. I am Police Chief Inspector 1484 Avion Solo of the Los Santos Police Service. This interview is recorded and the recording may be used should your case go to trial. Today I'm going to be interviewing PC Oliver Johnson with the Farms Division, colour number 0002. In the presence of PC Mike Peters, part of the Firearms Division, colour number 2222. On the allegation of murder. Now, before I can discuss with you, I've got to caution you. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something that you were trying in court. Anything that you do say may be given evidence to understand that. Yes. Journalist interview, you do have the right to have a solicitor present. You've chosen not to exercise that right, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, okay. If at any point you do change your mind, please let me know. We'll stop the interview and we'll see if we can get your solicitor, okay? Yes. Okay, okay. So, it's alleged that on or about the 2nd of January of this year, you shot and killed an individual by the name of Jan inside the Lost MC compound. Talk to you about that allegation. So, um, we were. Well, I was at that point uh, crude in the NRB, uh, saying on crude, a mantra of the time mm-hmm. of day. I'm not sure if you have that in your um, in your file, but uh, we were um, responding to reports of shots fired uh, from a uh, response crew out in a incident response vehicle at the scene. Um, I was coming from somewhere around Marabunta turf i believe i have a recollection of coming through mirror park as i approached uh, the scene um i stopped my rv short um and approach um, i'm communicating with the officers on scene i try to get a uh, sit trap off of them uh, to see what is going on Give me a mic one, uh, and i get told that uh, they've been engaged by a number of uh, local residents in the area um, who uh, started to location. discharge firearms at uh, them and the general public was my understanding when arriving. At the point of me arriving, the shooting has stopped and uh, the scene has calmed down. Uh, they're trying to get a better understanding of the general context, I believe, at the point where I show up. Um, there are no injured officers, uh, from my understanding. No one who is injured enough to uh, require aid. I remember asking if we had anyone in need of uh, medical attention or something to that effect. Um, as we're still talking and trying to gain understanding of the situation, we hear additional uh, gunshots within the Lost MC compound. Um, we then have a number of Lost MC members um, exit the compound or uh, stand in and around the gate of the compound uh, who identify a shooter in the rightmost corner. So that's immediately in and right uh, through the gate. They identify the shooter uh, as being uh, as hiding in there uh, by the seating area, I think uh, they specify. Uh, based on this information, I uh, make entrance onto the property uh, for the purpose of saving life and limb, obviously, uh, without warrant, and uh, neutralize the threats. Uh, because of their positioning, I had a hard time getting a central mass shot and was forced to take a critical shot um, for a well, neurological effect by striking them in the head. Um, the threat was immediately neutralized. Um, did not pose a threat officers anymore. Uh, and uh, I think that's the point where we really uh, land with the allegation, uh, where I uh, strongly uh, suppose that the threat uh, was imminent. The uh, individual, the uh, subject, was in possession of firearm, had his firearm in their hand, had within the last 20 seconds of the shooting 
fired shots towards members of the public within the Lost MC compound. Um, and uh, the use of force was in reaction to that action taken by the subject. Uh, hence, based on the use of force, uh, well, legislation, etc., uh, I believe myself to be uh, well within the regulations in that use of lethal force. It might also be worth adding that the critical shot is also very much authorizable by Oliver Johnson himself as a SDFC and a CTSFO both as per the Firearms Authorizations Compendium. Okay, dokie. Did you see this individual with any firearm before you opened fire? Yes, so as I come around the corner, I, at that point, um, the uh, information I was working on before coming around the corner was the shot fired, which had been audibly heard by myself, my colleagues, and the uh, members of the public within the Lost MC compound. And I'm working on the fact that I've been told that the shooter is around the seating area in the corner of the compound in the right. Uh, I cross the corner, I uh, see the individual sat uh, crouched in a sort of cover position, uh, gun in hand, I believe right hand, some type of uh, pistol I would uh, at distance uh, make it out as a uh, 9mm uh, 1911 type uh, pistol. I uh, take a second to uh, assess the situation <laughs> and I make the assessment that this is an imminent threat to life and limb of myself, my colleagues and the public based on what I just observed. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Was any warnings given to the individual? No. Uh, in the instance, I uh, do not believe uh, it to be uh, reasonable um, to give that warning. Um, if it would have been, for example, an individual whom we approached uh, who only had a firearm in hand, had not uh, used this, had not uh, shown an intent to kill with it, uh, then in line with our training, uh, then compliance would have been given. In the scenario, I approach an individual uh, has in immediate connection to me rounding the corner in shooting. Um, based on that, uh, my assessment was that doing so would uh, pose a <coughs> unnecessary and unreasonable uh, threat to life and limb, essentially. Mm. Okay, okay. Once you shot the individual, was there any chest call or any aid given to the individual? So, in, uh, well, uh, you all right? Yeah. Okay. So, after the shooting, uh, I approach the individual, and short obviously our immediate priority there is ensuring the threat is neutralized um, before we start to render aid. Once it was clear to me the threat was neutralized and uh, the risk to myself, my colleagues, and the public was mitigated, uh, and life saving um, first aid was uh, started um, because of the uh, nature of the uh, uh, shot the chances of any aid we could give on the scene or really professional aid um, making a difference i would argue is slim uh, but obviously in accordance with sop uh, first aid was rendered and chess was called to the scene uh, and he was declared dead on the scene by an chess staff Excuse me. that's okay Okay, okay. I'm going to uh, present you exhibit Papa Sierra Delta Zero One. That's CCV from the Lost Compound. I'll just, yes. Uh, 
send that over to you one second. Let me just take a look at that, please. Of course. I've seen the video. Okay, okay. So, in the um, in the video, what it does show when you come around the car, the individual actually appears to place one of his hands on his head as if he's uh, as if he's surrendering. I would hardly hey. understand that as a gesture of surrendering when uh, he's simply grabbing his head. Again, because of the well, uh, him putting a hand on his head. To me, did not mitigate threats. He had a firearm in hand and had within something like, uh, well, again, I don't have the exact timeline. Uh, you'll have to uh, go back and look at the body word, which I'd assume would be on file uh, for the police, uh, would show that there had been uh, very few seconds between this individual firing towards members of the public and the intervention made by myself. And uh, when I turn the corner, he still has the gun in hand and has just gone into cover, uh, assessed by me. And reasonably, I believe, by a reasonable person, the assessment would be that he's taken cover uh, to continue uh, this violence. Uh, he's not making an effort to uh, leave the scene, he's not making an effort to drop the weapon uh, or to surrender to us. He is simply taking cover in an effort to. Uh, further this act. It's the assessment made by myself on the scene. Mm. Okay, okay. That's all I want to ask for the, ask for the moment in time. What I'm going to do with how before I conclude the interview, I'm going to be serving you this Reg 17 notice to inform the, you that you are under internal investigation as well for the same matter. Want to sort that out? Yes. There we go. Okay. Okay, dokie. Do you have any questions for myself? Is there a time frame for uh, so, uh, investigation? Unfortunately not. We will keep you posted within and update you monthly if there's no updates between now and then. Okay? Okay. Uh, I okay. won't be going on the uh, long-term leave uh, at the end of the week. Okay, uh, and I would love to uh, get some more time uh, on shift before that. Obviously, I understand. Well, so you are, you're not being suspended time. at this time. You are being released under investigation now, okay? Okay, acknowledged. The time is 24 I'm concluding this interview.